Hello students, hope all of you are doing well during this pandemic days. Take care of your good health. Well, this is Dr. M. Boshanam, Associate Professor in Zoology, Maharani Science College for Women, Bengaluru. In today's session of genetics, we shall learn the concept of norm of reaction under section 2. The learning objective is to understand the influence of environment on phenotype and genotype of an organism. The contents includes under genetics, the session, uh, second session is norm of reaction. As we have learned in the previous session, that is session 1, the concept related to phenotype and genotype. We have learned that phenos is the term which is derived from the Greek term phenine that means to appear, typos means image or representation. Every organism exhibit the characters which are expressed externally. So this expressed externally appearing characters of a gene is referred as phenotype. The term phenotype was coined by uh, William uh, Johansson in 1911. Down in the picture towards the extreme right side is the picture of William Johansson. And towards left side we can find a flower related to two different colors. One is of blue, the other one is of yellowish green, indicating that the color expression is related to the genes of those particular flowers. So whatever the expression seen externally, so physical appearance of an organism is due to the uh, phenotypic characters. The external or physical expression of characters of organism, we generally call it as phenotype. Generally, the external appearance of the characters of an organism is mainly dependent on the gene that interacts with the given environment. So based on the influence of environment, the genes will express their characters and these characters will be expressed outside um, uh, uh, which we call it as uh, uh, physical expression or external expression of characters which we generally refer to as phenotype. These phenotypic characters are visible to the eyes because these characters are seen as direct observation by the organisms. The phenotypic characters tend to have the changes based on um, the developmental uh, stages. So throughout the life, there appears change in the phenotypical characters of the organisms. The phenotypic characters are generally expressed by the characters uh, by using the words. For example, height of the pea plant can show externally either the tall character or the dwarf character. So tallness, dwarfness refers to the phenotypic characters. Uh, here down in this slide, we can find the example related to the pea plant showing the tall uh, and dwarf characters, indicating that they are uh, phenotypic characters which are expressed externally. The second important term that we need to understand is the genotype. The word genotype refers to the genetic makeup of the organism. The word 
Genotype is derived from two Greek words. Genos means rays, typos means image or representation. So the genetic makeup of the organism is generally referred as genotype. Students remember this term of genotype is also coined by William Johansson in 1911. The genetic makeup when we address for the genotype, it otherwise refers to the gene representation of a particular character. Generally, the gene representation is seen as alleles or allelomorphs as two subunits or alternative forms on two homologous chromosomes. These genes are functional DNA present on the chromosomes. They are represented by using our symbols. Um, this is what we call as the genotype. Students remember the genome of an organism gets inherited from their parents. So genetic makeup will remain constant for an organism. It will never change if the environment in which uh, remains same for the organism. If there occurs any mutational change, there could be change in the genotype also. Otherwise, it remains constant. Remember students, the phenotypic characters are influenced by the genotype, but not the genotype uh, getting influenced by the phenotype. So down in the picture when we look at, we have um, the color of the flowers with different uh, 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 colors. One is of uh, violet, the other one is of the white. The violet color is because of the dominant genes which are represented in the form of genotypes, capital B, capital P, which is nothing but homozygous dominant, capital P, small b, which is of homozygous, I'm sorry, heterozygous but dominant. Whereas small b, small b representing genotypic character of recessive condition showing the colorless flowers. So genotype is always expressed by using certain of the symbols. Usually the characters starting alphabet can be used as the symbol for uh, denoting the genotype. For example, the tallness of the pea plant is denoted by capital T, the dominant character. And it could be capital T, capital T or capital T, small t. When it is capital T, capital T, we call it as homozygous dominant. If it is capital T, small t, we call it as heterozygous dominant. Both corresponds to the tallness character. There is the recessive condition of the same allele. Small t, small t indicates the dwarf uh, character of the organism. So remember, whether it is tall or dwarf, they are represented by means of certain of symbols. The symbolic representation we call it as genotype. Well, if we are exposed the organisms of identical genotypes to different environments which may show definitely certain of changes or variations in them. It's because environmental influences like uh, temperature, light, then the intensity of light etc. are different with the gradations. This is uh, why we find continuous changes or variations at micro level within a population. Generally, the organisms of similar genotypes, when they are exposed to different environments, they tend to show changes in their phenotypic characters. We have, let us suppose, two organisms A and B. Both have 
same genotype. But when I expose each of this organism A and B to different environments, let me say environment uh, uh, where there are cold conditions, the environment where there are temperate conditions. So two different environments when the organisms are getting exposed, there occurs character changes in their phenotype. So there is change in the phenotype in the identical genotypic individuals. It is purely based on the environment in which they are exposed to. This is called as norm of reaction. Hope the concept is clear. Down is the picture where towards the left side the plant variety we call it as Potentilla glandulosa. This variety of plant uh, grows at different altitudes. Uh, it can grow at high altitudes of mountains, medium altitude and low altitudes. The height of this plant also varies accordingly. So that's the speciality. Even though the genotype is same, when they have grown at different altitudes, the height of the plant changes. Similarly, towards the right extremity, we have the arctic wolf. It is the wolf that lives in the arctic zone. The color of the arctic fox, when we look at, here it appears to be brownish when the temperature is high. When they tend to expose to the winter season, when the winter season approaches the organism, the color of the fur totally changes to white. So at the lower temperature, the color of the fur of the body of organism changes to white. Genotype remains same. The inter internal genic constitution remains same. But when they get exposed to different environment, there occurs change in the phenotypic characters due to the influence of environment. This is what we call it as norm of reaction. So in ecology and genetics, a reaction norm, also called as norm of reaction, describes the pattern of phenotypic changes of a single or same genotype across the changed environment or changing environments. So just now we have understood the concept of a arctic fox. So during the other seasons other than winter, the color of the fox fur appears to be brown. Onset of the winter season will make the organism to lose the color of brown and becomes colorless, the snow arctic fox is what we see towards the right side. Students remember, this is what we call it is, the organism remains same here, genotypically it is same, but the external features changes for the animal when they expose to different environments. This is called as norm of reaction and this concept was given by Richard old track in 1909. When we look at the other example related to this concept of uh, norm of reaction of how environment will affect the phenotype of the organism even though they have the same genotypes. As we know, alleles are the alternative forms of genes or in simple they are the two alternatives of a gene representation on homologous chromosomes. Also, the extent of expression of these genic alleles depends on the environmental influence. There is a recessive allele represented as a small c to the power h. 
so we call it a CH in uh, Himalayan um, uh, rabbits. Himalayan rabbits are um, a series of rabbits. I mean to say they have mosaic coloration. This small CH is a gene that codes for the enzyme called as tyrosinase. This tyrosinase enzyme is heat sensitive enzyme. This enzyme is involved in the production of a dark pigment in their coat called as melanin. I repeat students, CH in its recessive form will induce the production of tyrosinase enzyme. That tyrosinase enzyme will in turn produce the dark pigment called melanin in the coat of the Himalayan breeds of rat. I'm sorry, rabbit. So this CH allele and the enzyme do not function at the temperature above 33 to 34 degrees centigrade. Over much of the body surface of Himalayan rabbits, the temperature is generally above 33 to 34 degrees centigrade. So, the enzyme remains inactive without the production of melanin. So, the body of the organism will have the more heat, more than 33 degrees centigrade. That will bring about inactivation of the enzyme, no production of melanin. So, what is the color of the fur here of the body where the enzyme is inactive? It appears to be whitish, colorless. So, this is what happens during the end, uh, development of the organism. The fur color becomes light or colorless when the organism doesn't produce the tyrosinase enzyme that will never produce further melanin pigment, pigment in them. But the body parts of the um, extreme ends such as the tail tips, <coughs> excuse me, ears, feet, nose, etc. The temperature is usually below 33 degrees centigrade. So when the temperature is below 33 degrees centigrade, the enzyme from the gene CH, tyrosinase is produced. When the tyrosinase is produced, melanin synthesis takes place. So the extreme tips like the mouth region, the ears, tips of the um, uh, legs and of the tail, when we look at it, it appears to be dark color. So that's what you find in the um, mosaic uh, Himalayan breed of rabbit here in the picture down. So what is the indication here? When the environment influences the organism, the same organism, at certain parts it will activate the gene, at certain parts it will inactivate the gene, so that two different characters are seen in the same individual. So mosaicism uh, uh, of color is seen uh, uh, on the body of Himalayan rabbits. So that's what we have understood just now. Now, Uh, supposing in, if the temperature of the body of the organism is artificially altered by keeping an ice pack on the body of the uh, rabbit, Himalayan rabbit. So what happens when the ice packs are kept? The temperature falls down there. 
So the place where the ice caps are placed appears to be black color uh, 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 fur. So indicating that wherever the temperature is low, the enzyme becomes active. Wherever the temperature is high, the enzyme becomes inactive. So the enzyme is directly in contact with the temperature activity. So it is a temperature sensitive enzyme and G giving different colors for the body of the organism of Himalayan rabbits. So here is a demonstration where the enzyme tyrosinase responsible for the synthesis of pigment melanin will become more when the temperature falls below 34 to 33, uh, 33 to 34 degree centigrade. The same can be activated when the temperature uh, 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 is high. When the temperature falls, the color becomes darker when the temperature becomes more for the body. The enzyme becomes inactive and no synthesis, so the color becomes colorless or white. So down in the pictures, you can I mean you can see how the uh, uh, organisms of uh, Himalayan rabbits look like. It uh, uh, remains same with the Siamese cats of the Arctic zone again. Similarly, we have another example related to the norm of reaction is Drosophila. The temperature changes for the gene called as Tetraptera that controls the formation of wing. Scientists have seen that when the temperature is 25 degrees centigrade, this gene of Tetraptera will have 35% of penetrance. So its activation is only 35%. So what happens to the rest of 65%? It will not be activated when, when the temperature is 25 degrees centigrade. Let us see at further low temperatures of 17 degrees centigrade, the penetrance power of this gene of tetraptera further gets reduced to 1%, indicating that only 1 in 100 will show the formation of the wing, the full number of wings, tetrapterans. So this is a special condition that you find for the uh, drosophila. So development of the wing is under the control of a gene called tetraptera, but the activity of tetraptera is controlled by the temperature. Higher the temperature, better the development of the wing be. Lower the temperature, wing development will also be uh, uh, reduced in the number of individuals. It is purely dependent on the penetrance power of the gene. Similarly, there is a recessive gene called VG, rest standing for vestigial wings in Drosophila. This vestigial wing gene is also influenced by the temperature. Students remember here, when the temperature is 32 degree Fahrenheit, the wings are feebly developed. They extend very less, very little. So the size of the wings will be very small. When the temperature rises to 40 degree Fahrenheit, the wings are better developed with some venation, some internal connections, supporting structures in it. When the temperature is 88 degree Fahrenheit, wings are very well developed with a very proper or conspicuous venation in it. What does it indicate? The formation of wings is again under the control of the temperature. Okay, so the gene activation is seen when the temperature becomes higher. So indicating that it is also a very good example related to um, norm of reaction. Students, what is norm of reaction? It refers to same genotype 
when gets exposed to different environments they show different phenotypic characters now similarly we have another example related to a plant variety called potentilla glandulosa <coughs> excuse me it is commonly called as a small californian plant it has a number of uh, genetic forms each of it is adapted to different growing uh, uh, altitudes as uh, high altitude low altitude and medium altitudes the scientists have collected the plants of potentilla from three different altitudes such as high altitude medium altitude and low altitudes now one plant from each location was split or cut into three units or three cuttings so that each cutting had the genotype which is similar so same or identical genotypic uh, uh, characteristics are maintained within the uh, each of these three cuttings now each of these three cuttings were grown at each altitudes one at a high altitude the other second one at medium altitude and the third one at a, a lower altitudes so at three different altitudes when the plants are grown students remember here three cuttings were from the same plant so the genetic constitution or uh, uh, genotype will remain same in all the three cuttings now each of these cuttings when are grown at three different environments the result was they differed in their phenotypic characters the one which was grown at high altitude showed good growth medium altitude shows medium growth average growth and low altitude showed lesser growth so there is change in the height of the plant at different altitudes even though the cutting was from the same plant the second important feature is that the number of leaves the overall size and shape of the plant started showing totally different characters so this is due to the condition referred as environmental influence so same genotype when the plant cuttings had but when are placed at three different altitudes we find difference in the growth difference in the shape of the leaf the number of the leaves then uh, overall form of the uh, uh, plant is because of the uh, uh, variation in the altitudes so this is what we call it as norm of reaction phenotypically they are different but genotypically they are same okay why they are different phenotypically it is because of the environmental influence on their traits the next classical example related to norm of reaction is arctic foxes the coat color in these foxes are influenced by the alleles or the genes with light and dark colored uh, um a fur coat the pigment is dark called melanin pigment responsible for the brown coloration in the foxes that are seen in the warm temperatures but at the cold temperature the color of the coat remains lighter or colorless the important condition here is that during the onset of the season the brown colored uh, fur on the arctic fox started slowly replaced with the white color coat 
as the winter approached it. By the time snow covers on the ground, the dark coat color changes completely to white. It is for the better camouflaging, better mimicking um, the surrounding environment in order to capture its prey. So down in the picture when you look at the brown color fox which is seen towards the extreme left started to develop the white color fur by the time when it uh, approaches the winter season. You can see the external environment with the snow cover matches with that of the fur color of the body of the fox. It is to mimic the external environment to capture the prey. So that's a speciality related to the um, uh, arctic fox. The next very example related to norm of reaction is the height of human beings. The height in human beings is controlled by a varied range of alleles that are generally inherited from the parents. However, the diet will influence the trait of the phenotypic character uh, in the individuals here. If we take the food that has no calcium, then phosphates and even uh, food with poor uh, nutrition during the critical period of the growth, that's before the adolescent age. What happens? The individuals will have retarded growth. It is because of uh, undergrowth of the bones and the muscles seen in the individuals. The affected individuals doesn't show a very proper growth. Students, but remember when the organisms, that is the human being, starts feeding on the supplement nutrients, they tend to attain the normal growth. So genotypically, the individual is same. Because of the external influence, there is change in the characters of the phenotype. So this is what we call it as norm of reaction. So norm of reaction refers to the phenotypic expression of a single genotype across a range of environments. So that's about the importance of norm of reaction. Students, after we understanding the concept related to the uh, norm of reaction and examples related to it, it is important for the short notes, five marks question it is of. Now, we shall try to understand the MCQs related to the uh, norm of reaction concept. The alternative form of a gene is called as what? It is called allele. So, answer is D. Which term represents a pair of contrasting characters? So, pair of contrasting characters refers to the allelomath. So, answer is C. The genotype phenotype distinction was proposed by uh, Wilhelm uh, Johansson. So, answer is B. The composite of organisms uh, observable characters or traits is called as what? Observable traits, phenotype. So, answer is B. The genetic makeup of an organism constitutes the genotype. So, answer is A. When two different genotypes produce the same phenotype, remember students, norm of reaction and phenocopy will have the opposing uh, thoughts, opposing ideas. When two different genotypes, when they are exposed to an environment, they produce the same phenotype. We call it as what? Phenocopy. So, answer is C. Phenocopy refers to two different genotypes showing the same phenotype. Okay. Whereas, in the norm of reaction, what happens? Condition wherein genotypes will remain same. 
okay but phenotypes will be different at different environments so when two genotypes with same phenotype is seen we call it as phenocopy phenotype is copied whereas see the condition here in an experiment you attach an ice pack on the chest of an himalayan rabbit for several days what will you expect to see there what happens when an ice pack is kept on the chest of the himalayan rat so the color of that particular zoo tends to be darker so answer is d the coat color of that area will appear darker so answer is d now the phenotypic expression of the single genotype across a range of environments so there is the genotype will remain same but phenotypically they will be different at different environments if you take an organism get to a newer environment the characters what it shows is different the same organism when you place in the other environment the character is different arctic fox for example at winter season the fur color appears to be white at summer season the fur color appears to be brown same animal so this is called as norm of reaction answer is b so with this we are completing the concept related to a uh, norm of reaction students the outcome of today's session that we have learnt is we have understood the terms such as phenotype genotype phenocopy as well as norm of reaction so references includes the cell biology genetics molecular biology evolution and ecology by pierce verma and agarwal zoology for degree students by agarwal histology and uh, genetics by mohan p arora cytology genetics and molecular genetics by b n pandey the web references of wikipedia and britannica.com also was used to prepare this uh, ppt thank you all students